Good morning. It's OG and it's day three and I have never been so happy for something to not be day two in my entire life. I'm gonna try to tell this story really quick and not jiggle the camera too much with my body movement. Um, but anyway, so yesterday I made my video and I got in the car, finished packing, and I was setting up the second camera um, so I could show you guys all the beautiful uh, countryside. Um, and it shattered in my hand and seriously cut my finger here. Ow. Um, and so I like try not to bleed all over everything. I'm wearing a white shirt, by the way, because that'll be great. And um, trying to find something to cover the wound and get a Band-Aid and find all the broken pieces that are now scattered all over my possessions and hoping the phone doesn't explode and things. So I get that situated and I start to leave and all of a sudden a windstorm kicks up and it's literally bending the signs and shaking the, the um, traffic lights and the lightning, oh my God, the lightning. And there, there's a thought of me that's saying, maybe this is an omen. I'm like, no, 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 it's just about you. So I start to get on Nashville's uh, interstates and because of the rain, everyone was driving really slowly, which was fantastic because it seems in this particular city, they have exits on both sides of the highway. But Google doesn't really share that information with you until you're right there. But because everyone was driving slow, no one cared that I drove slow, and um, I was able to get the hell out of Nashville. Um, and the storm chased me for a while until like Murfreesboro, I'm guessing at these city names. I'm 92.8% sure that's correct. And um, made a stop, I got a drink, and then the long wait. Um, I have my friend Chris Sterkin, thank you so much, who got on the phone with me and followed the maps just like Miss Lisa did uh, the day before that, and basically gave me you no know, hints when I would be getting close to the things. And he said, well, there's one little one, you barely notice that. And, and I guess I really didn't notice it because when I got to the next one, which I am told is the Tennessee River, it just went up this hill. And so all you saw were these giant arches and it came out of nowhere. Um, and so from that point in the story on, I am pretty much hyperventilating. But I got over it mostly because of the height. Um, it was a good bridge and it was nice and wide and that wasn't, you know. So then I get to Paducah, which I knew uh, from my own studies was, this is a place to breathe before we get to the serious ass bridges. So after Paducah, it was, it diverted me off to this tiny little, I'm literally going through people's neighborhoods and um, I call Spearkin again and I'm like, am I, is Google, where, where is it taking me? Because it's literally taking me to the 29 miles of road that if you're going to get murdered, this is the place to do it. Um, so I start getting on the phone because I know the Ohio River is coming and I had three different friends. I was trying to call and were calling me and then... Um, this happened. Saved message. Do you know how alarming it is for you to say, I don't know where Google has taken me, and then the call just drops? Give me a call back. Let me know you're okay. Love you. So, all of a sudden, I'm on the Ohio River, and even though they didn't really have any guards on the side to you know, let me pretend I wasn't on a giant river. It was at least wide. Um, and I didn't get the feeling that I was going to be hit by an oncoming car the entire time I was on it. But I did start to cry. And um, I've got nobody because I'm begging Google to call everyone. And it can't get a call through. So not only is it the place where you're going to get murdered, nobody can get a so cell phone signal out. So good to know. Um, and all of a sudden, as I realize that you can see the bridge to the Mississippi, as you're approaching it, um, so I just stop the car and just have a cry um, because I feel like I'm stuck. Um, I can't get anybody on the phone. I can see the Mississippi Bridge, which by the way, you can see also the broken metal cables swinging in the breeze. and. I don't know what color green that is, but that should not be a color that metal ever is. Um, but I've got to go. I said I'd try. So don't think I'm being brave in this part of the story. I'm just stuck on this microscopic piece of land in between two bridges. Um, and I start to go 
and I'm, I'm going. And at that very moment, glorious Topher Payne, thank you, Topher, got me on the phone and um, talked me over it. Um, it was horrifying. It is pavement and metal. And as you're going over the pavement and metal, it's just kaboom, 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 kaboom. And the semis go by you and it shakes the entire bridge. And then the metal is making this very reassuring sound like it's gonna give at any minute. And so you think you're almost at the end, you're almost at the end, you finally get to the end. I did see the little Dairy Queen I'd seen on Google Maps, but I was so full of adrenaline, I knew if I stopped that car, I would never get back in it. So Topher keeps talking to me, and thank God, because for the next 20 miles is the second place if you ever want to kill anyone, this is the place to do it. And the roads are really, really narrow, just like that Mississippi Bridge, by the way. In fact, as I was getting off the bridge and Topher's going, yay, you made it, this car is flying towards me, and how it did not hit me, optically, it looked like it was going to. I was prepared, I, I stopped the car and was ready for the crash. Jesus must have gotten between me and the car. Thanks, big guy. Um, so anyway, so another 20 something miles, uh, back roads with, you know, six foot cliffs and cornfields. So if your car rolls off of it, they'll never find it until harvest. And the other side is just a sheer facing, um, death. So anyway, finally I made it back onto 57 and 60 something glorious miles to where I am now. An actual accessible room in that not only can I access it, but it's well thought out and everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, so I actually ordered myself some dinner because last night I had to eat what was in my backpack because I couldn't get out of my room. And just a quick note how I don't overcome my disability I overcome, if anything, inaccessibility. And I am sure that that room and the fact that I was figuratively and literally trapped in it probably did not help my anxiety. I hate feeling helpless like that. And I hate that there are places that don't think that disabled people can travel solo um, because there were many moments when it's like, oh, we'll just send your invisible, able-bodied friend to go do that. Or that, you know, that mythical uh, free uh, person paid for by the government 24 hours a day that every disabled person um, gets. So thank you, Kimberly Jurgen and Little Al Dancing and Ayashti, um, you all, and oh, and Amanda. Oh, thank you, Amanda. Um, what a day. Um, but I did finally make it here into my room and I just kind of sank on the floor and had another cry and a long hot glorious bath and food that didn't come out of my backpack uh, which was an apple and a bagel last night and um, I've only this is the short run I've got about 200 miles to be just outside of PSG's gates I don't see anything terrifying and as long as there are no smoke or police cars or sharp objects or lightning storms or bridges made by the Roosevelt era, um, I might make it. I'm so excited. When I stop throwing up, it'll be great. Thank you guys. Hang in there with me. Call me, uh, text messages. You guys sending me text messages and Google would just throw them in my ear was so lovely. Um, here you go.